Welcome to this inversion diversion session. You're going to need some props so that you can enjoy the poses to their utmost potential. A couple blocks, a bolster, a couple blankets, and a belt. If you have a sandbag or a couple sandbags, that would also be useful in grounding the body and helping with the circulation um, transition in the organs and the muscles. And I'll say a, a few words about the category that we're focusing on is inversions. They really have the potential to set the body into a period of repair and shift the circulation around the organs when we turn upside down. It also in influences the stimulation of the flow of lymph and intensifies the flush through the lymph nodes. And this is all in regards to when we make the body in such a shape that the head is lower than the pelvis. And so we're turning things upside down and reversing the gravitational flow through the body. So let's begin with a concentration of opening our lungs. So I want you to position yourself so that the bolster is across your mat horizontally. You have a block that's placed directly in front that's at its lowest setting. And then as you sit on the block, you're going to grab a belt and place the belt so it's hips distancing for your legs. So slip it over the legs and as you Tighten it down. Your emphasis is to maintain for today the hips distancing of the legs. Okay, so possibly having the belt at the mid thigh would be useful. Center yourself on the block. And as you lower down, recruit your abdominal musculature. Maybe stop about midway with your elbows touching into the bolster, and then as you lower down, you want to have a blanket under your head, so slide that in for support and elongation for the neck. So there's just the right amount of flexion through the neck and the muscles just below in the trapezius. Think of this as kind of spreading the circulation in that area. Now, as I let the legs walk in, just to get my ribs in their opening, I'm going to take a sandbag and place that across the upper thighs and then glide the sandbag down. So it basically kind of emphasizes the contour of the hip and the support of the front body. Now, however the legs are creating this balance in the front, it does create a sensation of pressure in our lower backs. So we're going to work with opening up the chest as greatly as we can. If you have a second sandbag, you can place that across the upper ribs. You can also go minus sand and set your arms so they're open. You could place a bag of rice, something that's a little bit smaller of a support but equally influential on your breathing muscles. So let's come into the beginning of the practice, rest our eyes, rest the brain waves, and direct our attention on the even rhythm of our breath. Feel where there's a spread of the chest and an experience of the spine arching, and feel where the waist stretches up through now if your back muscles are creating a deeper arch continuing what I want you to do is move the feet out farther so that could be a little bit more comfortable for the back but as we expose the articulation of each of the ribs spreading apart, opening up the ribs, opening up the respiratory tree, the bronchial tubes, and the lungs. And feel
feel of the waist is in this lengthening experience. Never holding the breath, experiencing the fullness of the breath when you inhale. And the selection of emptying the lungs on the exhalation. As you start to move your legs back inwards, we're going to take the sand aside. And with that shift of circulation, you might have felt a little bit of opening through the chest and the waves of the muscles in the rib cage. But as we start to slide the feet in and thus bring the knees up, unbuckle. And then as you move your way of your knees inwards, we're going to come into a mild inversion, okay? So this is called upward, upside down, forward bend, okay? So scoot yourself back onto your bolster so the tailbone is at the edge. If that block is um, still being used by your body to be held onto, I want you to slide it aside so it's not going to interrupt that core strength. So you're kind of right on the edge of the bolster here. Start to lift up the legs and let them straighten out and let them fall towards your chest. Now when you feel the legs fall towards the chest, if you have a blanket under your head, you're gonna slide that back. But you're gonna take a blanket, however you wanna mold it in front of your hip, at the crease of the hips you can. I like to take it into a, just a general two. So I roll it up. And then if my legs lean back into that blanket, it kind of has this nice support. I find my, my fulcrum point, I find my balance here, I'm waiting to find that point of balance that the legs can really feel that they're relaxing into the blanket. And it opens up my back. And as the legs feel as if they draw a little farther back towards my chest, I spread the arms open, okay? So there's no sand involved here. It's the clear, distinct transition of moving the flow of gravity back towards the heart. So feel the spine, feel the arch through the back, loosening up and letting go. And as the back muscles are centering, can you lengthen your exhalation and really truly relax your feet so they're not working towards circling or reaching, they're just part of the experience of the body reversing the flow of gravity internally. So there ought to be a massage into the vital organs in this pose. You likely feel a little bit of circulation to the tummy. So noticing that experience here. Start to let the knees take a little bit more of a crease yeah, and truly get a feel of how the organs have transitioned that circulation internally. Now that the low back and the mid chamber of the back muscles are starting to open, you're gonna take off the blanket and then grasp a hold of a block Place it between the knees, and we are in a kind of an inversion sequencing of sorts that's working with a medley of um, the composition of the circulation is in the back lines of the body to start, and then we're working on the circulation in the groins now, and also the ease in our hips. So place that block between the knees, 
and then let the feet lower down. Open out the arms straight to the sides and start to shift your knees to your right. Feel how that shift is moving into the outer left hip. And then the knees transition back through the midline to the left side. Try the experience with the breath exchange. So as I exhale, I move to the side with my knees. And as I inhale, I center. Exhale to the side. And just let the experience gradually motion through your hips, carefully loosening up the back of the waist, the lumbars, the hips, the legs. It does start to satisfy the circulation, interestingly, in the thickest part of our legs. Right, that mid thigh, the lateral rotators on the outer band of the legs has a tendency to have a, uh, a tricky challenge with feeling open and loose, which corresponds to our hips and how they feel. So next time you come back in center, you're going to bring your block aside, set it down and take a sandbag and then place that sandbag so it goes right to the soles of your feet and push it straight up. So as your feet are straight up, flexing through them and anchor your pelvis, you can feel the back of the pelvis gently pressing and the heels reaching, the toes back. Feel where the length is in the back of the legs and strengthen the core muscles by moving the belly as you inhale up and as you exhale move the belly down towards the spine. Inhale lifting and exhale lower. Explore when the movement of the tummy gets to its lowest point and pause. And really feel where the flexes of your feet. Can you feel flexion and calf awareness, kind of that moment where you can define equilibrium in the legs? And I encourage you to try to keep it so the legs are straight-ish. If they need to have a micro bend, of course, okay? So you might get a feeling where you micro bend your knees. And if that balances out the depth of stretch into your hamstrings. Now, if you work towards straightening out the legs even further, as high as they can lengthen, then you aren't really forcing the feet to flex anymore. You're really working on that invigorating quality through the legs. So reversing the effects of gravity to the heart, to the lungs, this specific inversion called Viparita Karani is highly valuable for the nervous system, for the circulatory cardiovascular system, and the lymphatic system. Right? So it flushes the lymph, intensifies that flush through the groins, back to the heart,
Now waver for a moment between bending and straightening the legs. Get a feel, something in between. So we're going to begin the process of shifting by bending the knees so you recruit some core legs. Keep the feeling of bending the knees, bending the knees, recruit the legs. And then I'm going to encourage you to do a couple leg presses. Now my arms are in a vague space, right? They're not necessarily cactus. They're not necessarily straight out. They're kind of in between, a little wavery. So you might find that when you are moving into these poses and having a habit of doing them, because you feel good from doing them, you might find that you add it to your life. Um, so I'm going to encourage you to kind of sample and also you might end up taking your arms overhead and recognizing oh, maybe why that is not the best option for the heart rate. You're trying to either equalize or lower the heart rate in this pose and this would generally maybe increase it if my arms are over. And now let's remove that sand and let's grab our belt. And we're going to place the belt so it's in a wide loop and We'll take that belt, loop it up, big loop, under your right foot to the occipital ridge. Occipital float is really what this ought to be called. So we're going to take our belt around our foot, and it's a pretty wide loop. Um, as I lift it up and I take it overhead, I want to lift it up before I take my, try to pull my neck up. So I'm going to bring it back behind my head first. Straighten out the leg, even if you're anticipating getting there faster. Take the time to stretch the right hamstring massively. And then bring your head up and bring the belt to the center of the back and stretch out the hamstring. The left leg may decide to bend, to descend, so that means you could add a sandbag to it. You certainly have an opportunity to use your sand to ground the body and, and really get a little more experience of that evolution of the circulation in your hamstring and then all the way to your sitting. Um, awareness all the way through the back of the waist and thus to the chest. So feel the left heel reach. Feel the weight of your head back into your belt and traction your neck. Okay, so that right foot is pushing, but also my head is leaning back. Right, so I have this kind of nice balance here of traction between my leg and my spine. And then I'm trying to feel where my breath is around my ribs, that it's easy going, and relax your arms. They're downstream. Meditate the balance on the legs. Really balance the legs. Let all these other things that you want to add, the frills to it, just let those go. That's not important. So we have a fairly thick, concentrated balance. Now when you switch sides, pull the sand up to your belly, across it, and then hold the back of your head and you switch your left foot up into the belt. Sometimes it goes through easy. And as the right leg goes down, it's nice to get that right leg to feel from that deep, satisfying pulse in the back of the leg to kind of quenching that leg now with sand on top of the thigh, optional, left leg up. After experiencing one side, you might take that second side awareness differently. You 
know, there's differences in the circulation um, of flexibility from one side to the next. Probably even deeper than what you feel, but on a cellular level. So give them each an equal opportunity to strive for balance. And then honoring the limitations. So if it's a little challenging, for instance, you might have your hands hold the belt instead and slide it back so the hands are palm to palm. Thumbs hold onto the belt that's connecting right around the, uh, the webbing between your thumb and index. And then head on the blanket and stretch the leg back. So this might feel a little bit more controllable for you. You can move the foot, you can waver between arms a little farther back, get the arms to stretch, the hamstring can lengthen, just working with it. Now with that balance of the hamstring, we're going to move the foot up. Now I'm going to go back to the occipital float. You might stay with the arms, you might stay with the, the belt at the occiput. So it's really that bulge at the back of your head. You'll feel where that bump is. And that's about where you want your belt. Mine is a tiny bit above the occipital ridge. And it's the actual attachment of the trapezius muscle in your back. That's where it is. it starts. Or it ends however you want to look at the body. It's definitely there though at that very spot, that, that muscle. So you're stretching that upper back muscle that tends to be pretty brick-like for most of us, the trapezius. Now, I'm going to let the leg start to wander a bit by putting my hands to the back of my head or move my belt off of my head. If it's in your hands, you're already there. Take your sand off and bring your left and right foot into the belt so your feet push out. And then you continue that direction of inversion. Yeah, by now your feet may get cold, right? You've moved your blood from the extremities all the way to the vital organs. So the likelihood of feeling this transfer of uh, heat internally is there. It's great. So that comes back to the idea of the inversions being um, a time where your body is in repair mode. Repair, recovering, restoring, rehabilitation. And for this position, any of these legs up is good for the knees. So, you know, it, it's just a different um, way that gravity flows around them. Pretty simple. The most simple science experience you can have in your body, inverted. Okay, so we're gonna stay with this pattern. I wanna give us the kind of the, the full deal. So we're gonna work with some mild inversions and then a little bit of hands and knee patterns and then end up with a very full inversion at the wall. So bend your knees, take your hands to your belt, slide your feet together, and then as you bend the knees a little further, you're gonna scoop off the belt. And as you take that belt aside, bring your hands to the bolster, knees tuck in, push the bolster forwards, place your feet on top, Push down, lift up your hips, and notice the direction of the knees into pelvic tilt. Tail goes in. Now as your spine lowers down, you're gonna grab a block and place it between the knees at its most narrow setting, and then lift your knees again. Lift your hips again. Your knees were already lifted. So when my hips lift up, and my knees have to be up to hold that, I'm going to emphasize squeezing into the block. 
Okay, you can use a ball for this as well if you have a mid-sized grippy ball. Those work really nicely. Now put your hands on your hips, kind of slide them up so the elbows are on the floor and they kind of scoop. So it's like this almost this kind of bicep curl approach. You're not quite bicep curling, but you're kind of scooping under, getting your hips up. And get that feel of the hips lifting. Now, what muscles do you activate? It's all the way through the legs, even into your feet to get this. So, we're gonna find that other block. We're gonna slide it under at its mid height this time. Now, let's say you can get that block under pretty easy on the mid height, and you'd like to know if you could get a fuller inversion and get higher and higher. You could try, you can hook your toes, um, put your toes down so your heels are up, lift up a little bit more, turn the block. Now what I do is turn the block lengthwise from the sacrum down. Some like to turn the block across, that feels a little bit comfy. And then when you're there, you're going to bring your knees in, take your block out, regardless of the height of your block under your tailbone. And you're going to straighten the legs out. It's a very deep back bend, especially with the block this high. So the mid height might work better for you, but get a feel for this opening at the hip flexors and the psoas. So this cross fiber psoas hip flexor opener. And if the legs want to go a little wider, you have your bolster to distribute your legs however you want. Bring your hands under so your elbows are down, chest open, shoulders back. Very good. Blanket is an option under your head. If you want to hold on to hands, interlace, stretch the chest a little further. If the block is high, that's really satisfying to do. But it's a quite a deep experience to opening the heart. Okay, so with about a few more of those selective inhales for four counts, exhaling out for five, Now we're going to walk our feet up onto the bolster, knees pointing up. Feel when you have no block between the knees, the spacing of the knees really goes out. So let yourself be comfortable with that idea. It's a little bit of a liberal way of moving into this bridge pose. And then feel when you push into your feet, do you push into your tailbone at the same time? So when I push down in my feet, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to slide the block out, but I'm going to keep my hips up. And then as I lower down, my spine goes so slow, slower than you can imagine. Patience could be for yourself. Yeah, feel each of the vertebral columns in the neck of the spine, upper, upper back then lower down and then feel if it's sensation is comfortable is it stinging sensation what goes on in the spine and you're working to round it out so it's easy going okay and now let the spine center completely open out the arms to relax the chest and then windshield wiper your knees side to side. You really get a feel of the width of your feet on your bolster, and the knees are windshield wipering side to side, slow it down. But in, encourage where the waist is stretching here when you're going side to side. And then once you get over towards the left side the next time, with your knees, I want you to bring your right knee on top of the left leg, and then you're gonna push your bolster with your feet to the right side of your mat. I learned this move from my cats. 
using your lower paws for all kinds of tactics. So we got our bolster on the right. You might be satisfied to have a blanket right on that corner so you can kind of unroll it a little bit. So you have a little bit more padding on the bolster. Right leg is down, make it comfortable. If you also like to practice with a blanket fully under you, you could do that as well to make this the sequencing comfortable for your just your body, the touching on the floor. Cross the right leg, <clears throat> the left leg over to the right side, and then add a sandbag to the outer left leg. One or two on the outer left leg, influencing your hip. Now a sandbag can also go up across the chest or to the arm. This full feeling of crossing over is delightful for the head to turn left and really to feel where your hip and your waist are loosening up. It's like you have to place them in this slightly unusual fixated position to eventually loosen up around the joint. So your traction in moving, right, and just basic general activities of daily living feels more fluid. So we're hydrating the tissues. It's good stuff. Good medicine. Okay, now we're going to start to move the sand aside if there's any on your arm first. Now I'm going to encourage you to let this be for a few more after your sand is off. Can you reach for your left leg with your right hand and grasp onto the outer band of the, the IT band on the outer piece of this left thigh? So you can draw a line from your, what you feel is your hip on the left side, right? It's going to really be that attachment to the leg itself. And then just draw a line, very small line, across all the way to the outer left knee and press over. Sensation is full. Yeah, full sensation through the hip. to your back, come into reclining pigeon, left foot crosses right to the right knee and reach your hands behind the right thigh as you pull them in to your center. Feel where the weight is in your lower back. Kick up the right foot, invert the leg. Pulling with your hands behind the right thigh. Bend the right knee. And then as you lower the foot down and uncross, tuck your knees in and then move your bolster carefully. You might be using your feet to kind of kick it over to the left side of your mat. Use your lower paws. Right leg is going to cross over to the bolster. Left leg is next to it comfortably, so it might be pretty bendy. It might be straight. You might decide you roll a little into your left hip. The key is that this right side is open to the ceiling. So you don't have an aerial view of this right now, but you do have kind of a perspective um, that's creative in license right now that you can put your sand and place it to the exterior leg, spread open the right arm, and you might put sand on the right arm. You might roll your head to the right and decide otherwise. 
the experience of circulating through the chest and strengthening the upper body, right, a little bit with this rotation, strengthening its, uh, its range of motion, right, so part of strength is also your ability to take that range of motion and spread that out and let your head roll to the right. Yeah, feel where the chest turns. Feel an open quality. And that crossover with the right leg to the left. Now feel where you land in the rib cage with your breath. We're going to take the sand off on both parts, all sand off, and then bring the left hand to the right knee and feel that cross directional angle sensation from the leg. Now, you know, one side you might really be able to get a touch of the hip and slide that down a fine line to the outer knee. And, you know, this um, whole kind of fibula, this whole attachment here at the, the knee on the side is, some for some people it's a sore space and it doesn't necessarily feel sore when you're kind of jiggling it back and forth, but it can be really a tender spot in the future with circulation as we age. So we're trying to get as much kind of hydration and motion, you know, fluid fluidity through the legs here. So this will feel like a tight band, you know, iliotibial band. It does feel a little bit tight. But that's part of what helps us stay kind of connected and together is to have things, have some tensile, um, fascia, right? So notice what you can do to breathe yourself through this. Super important here. And you'll feel how those leg parts are parts of, um, of balance in our composition now. So when you come back to the reclining pigeon, Bring the knees in, cross the right foot to the left knee, hold the back of the left leg. Even if you can hold this without grabbing your leg, it does bring some equilibrium to the muscle package here in the inner thigh. Now your left foot could drop. I like the idea of inverting again, getting it upside down. It just drains out the leg. Even if it doesn't feel like it's a, a experience that I feel like this flushing, uh, it does have that, that experience internally in the body, right? Changing the direction, flushing the tissues. That is truly happening internally. Flushing out systems in the body with the technicality for it. So bend the left knee and then uncross, and I want you to actually roll yourself to all fours. And that might be for you that you roll from your back here all the way to sitting. Um, or I like to be very comfortable that I roll to the side so it's super safe for me. And then when I come around to hands and knees, I'm gonna place a blanket to the center underneath my knees and I'll have a bolster towards the front wherever your direction is right now 
And when my hands are besides my bolster, I've got a blanket on top, just for ease and comfort. But round your back and then toes under, lift the knees and come into downward facing dog. Feel the spine stretch and let your head touch the blanket. If it doesn't touch it, lower down and roll it up so you can get closer to touching your blanket so it's an inversion. That would mean I'm touching down, right, with the place I'm inverting, right? Whether that's the back of the pelvis, your head, right? So you have that con connection in inverting the body. Light, likely your sinuses will be affected by this practice. You might feel them when you're upside down, then everything flushes out. So hold the dog pose for a while, spread the fingers, reach your sitting bones back. If this is really painful in your wrists, you can do a couple things. You can grab the sides of your mat, kind of pull the mat in, grab it with your fingers, and then push back and up. That can be helpful for your wrists. And some people find, I find it quite helpful to have my hands on blocks underneath my hands when I lift up my hips. Clearly this gets me a lot higher in my dog pose. So it's more of an inversion as well. And if you can tolerate that, go for that. If it's intolerable, the next stage would be to put your hands on a chair seat and then come down with your head. Okay, so feel the hips move back, feel the sitting bones move back, 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 and into the groins behind you. What's behind you? Now walk your hands back to your feet, and then be in your forward bend with your toes rising up on the edge of that blanket, heels down, stretching your calves. You can bring your blocks under your hands or you could tip your bolster up with your hands on the short end of the bolster. So find the height of the blocks under your hands and facilitate that process of stretching your calves, head down, spine stretching, hips lifting up. Really lift your hips. Feel the back muscles completely lengthening out. Now that we've come full circle in practice, I want you to slide your feet off of the blanket and then take a moment with your feet wider than hips distance almost to the edge of your mat if possible, wide stance, knees apart, almost towards the squat, and then let your arms dangle. Head completely hangs from the spine, no pressure on your neck to hold your head up. Let it go. Practice letting go. Starts in your body. That's a good place to start. Now feel where your knees bend, feel where your spine is reaching. And then we're going to come forward and I'm going to give you two options for your final pose today. It's going to be either knees wide, feet together, child's pose, scoot the bolster right between the knees. Tuck it in there, keep your blanket on top, roll it up, turn your head to the side, and let the back ease if the knees are comfortable here. This is where you end for several minutes at your own pace with the head turning right to left. Those of you that are going to stay in child remain, and after about 10 breaths, turn your head to the other side. Those of us going up into a full inversion versus a forward bend are going to move over to a wall space with our bolster at the base of the wall, okay? And you're going to want to have a 
body support, maybe if your wall space is not so warm, you could put a blankie next to it. And then you're gonna sit up with your rear against the wall on the corner of the bolster and roll to swing your legs up the wall and invert yourself. This is called the inversion conversion. <laughs> so as the feet are up, you could add sand to them. You could add sand to your belly and focus on diaphragmatic breathing. And you can balance it out. Those of you in child's pose, let go. Close your eyes and just be. Viparita Karamians, feel where your back is centered on the bolster and let go. If the seat doesn't touch the wall, it's okay. The idea is already in, in play right now with reversing the flow of gravity in the legs. It's happening. You're there. You're getting the benefits right here. We settle our minds to the current of breath, experiencing the flow through the back and the front of the body, depending on our experience with the pose we've selected. Those in child's pose, be sure that you've turned your head to the other side by now. And then you might take it to a balanced forehead on the blanket. As long as the blanket is rolled up enough, your head will comfortably lean in. So the frontal lobes of the brain, the frontalis muscle, is touching onto the blankets. And there's a little pressure there to massage and to calm the mind. So there's pressure points in this part of our head that influence, obviously, things like sinuses, but temporal, and just feeling where the frontal lobe focus right now is. Relax the neck, those of you upside down with legs up. Feel the eye center in the skull. Take a final sweep of your lungs with your exhale. If you're at the wall, bend your knees, take the sand off, take Baddha Konasana feet together, knees apart, resting on your back. Those of us in child, we have that similar angle with the knees, but our feet are behind us, rather in front of us, right down to the groins. So we're gonna all meet in that position. So if you're in child's pose, carefully come up to all fours, and then you might push your bolster a little bit forward. You might want to take a down dog for a moment to cool off the back of the knees. Sometimes cooling them off and stretching them open feels really good. And if you're at the wall, bring the knees in, roll to the side, sitting with your back against the wall. And for all of us coming up to sitting on our bolster and get a sense of the knees apart and the feet together with a block under each knee. Yeah, you might feel some effects from the practice immediately, just feeling the mind and the circulation into the heart. So with the knees apart, the feet together, the heart centered up from the groins. Bring the waist to motion back. Open the back of the heart, 
round the back, chin towards the ribs. Inhale, chest center, and up, and up, and up. Lift up the chest, lift up the chin, and exhale. Hands in front of your heart. Thank you for taking your time and practicing. May this practice be a benefit to you. Namaste.